Welcome back to the channel. So Mori 4.5 was just released and today we're gonna take a look at how we can use this material system to make this lens here using the new materials. And it's gonna be the Arnold shader and an Arnold project. So it's a two part series and uh, let's get into it now. Okay, so before jumping into creating shaders in Maya and using them here in Mori, we wanna just take a look here at the new shader. So on the vendor shader now, we have the Arnold shader. So I touched base on this in uh, a previous video that's gonna link to. So I'm just gonna just take a quick look here of some of the improvements that was made between now and uh, final beta. So there was an issue with the roughness and that seems to have gone away now. So now we actually have the better roughness here. So if I look here, so yeah, it's better preview. So I'm, I'm happy that this one was resolved in the final release. So it, it kind of looks more now in the line than if I offline render. So yeah, kudos to Foundry to improve this experience. And uh, yeah, otherwise it's the um, Arnold shader, I guess. Um, you have all of the settings in the shader and this the shader is meant to drive materials and some of the input series stub shaders. And that means you will not be able to preview all of them. Sheen, I think is one of those that's uh, just mappable in the material. And also here, very quickly before we start to create the materials, this is a quick recap how you create the material. So you need the node graph. Yeah, so creating a material, you type here in a node graph material, and then you get this question, what shader you want to create the material for? So we can do this, say Arnold here, and we will get this one. So this one is a container that where you can build networks, define the values, and you do this inside this material container. So if I go here and hit the S button, it's gonna get a subgraph here. So if I highlight this here, you have all of the outputs. Now you can start to build networks, connect, all of the, the values here into your uh, material that's gonna drive uh, the material in the end. So yeah, that's the quick rundown here. I'm not gonna go through all of it because that's gonna be now actually when I create the material here in uh, Maya and Mari. So let's jump into Maya now and define the materials for the lens that we're gonna work with here today. Okay, so let's create this material now, the red anodized that we can see here. I wanna create this material and um, then take it over into uh, the values. So I guess, first off, it's a metal. Fire up the metalness to one there, so that, that we get somewhere. Take a color here, so let's see here. Maybe something like that, uh, it's kind of a... Uh, it's a little yellow in it. And let's fire up the roughness a bit there. So if I would just save out these settings now and apply them in Mori. So first off, I wanna check something here. In Mori, I have my setup here for the color management to uh, Aces CG. So my rendering space is Aces CG. So whenever I copy values over, I know that they're gonna match. So let's create another material, this part up here. For example, this part here, let's create that one. This is also a metal. So, but yeah, when I look at it, it feels a little tinted towards like almost like a smoke, smoke color and very rough and it has micro uh, noise in it. So that's something I have to look into when I create the material in Mori as well. I guess uh, we can start to just increase the roughness a bit. We wanna take this color here and just slightly like a uh, colored, a little warm. Let's see, let's go up here, see what we get. Yeah, something like that maybe. It's a little too much. Let's desaturate it a bit. Just slightly like that. Something like that with some um, micro scratches. 
And now let's create uh, this uh, material onto the housing and then we can start to copy over two materials in Mari. Take the values we get here. Um, so let's re-enable this and um, start to uh, tweak this. So either I go metal or, uh, but it, I mean, it is a metal housing, but it feels like it's coated with something. So let's, let's try a, um, a coated uh, specular driven one first and see how that looks so let's take this just take this down increase the roughness even rougher but i'm gonna have a, a noise to break up because this if i look at it it's very it's like a micro uh, noise so i guess um let's zoom out and let's rotate this so it's get some um, light onto um, from the HDR. Yeah, it could be something like that. Let's play with the uh, with the IR setting there for a bit. So let's take this one. So you have to envision that we have a, a micro noise here because that's gonna be important for the look of this one. Like it's like a fine, almost powdered uh, look there. If I take this down and increase the roughness slightly to one point, no, I mean the IOR, 1.7, something like that. And then I'll take it down to 1.6 again there and just increase with a bit of roughness instead. So let's see here my black levels. Let's take a look. Kind of reacts like it does when I look at it here in my studio. That metal there, it's a little smoky, but still uh, kind of rough. Let's start show. And uh, now just uh, open Mori and translate these values into the materials and save them out and start to paint and add the uh, text and materials. So yeah. Okay, so here is my little Frankenstein setup between uh, Mori and um, Maya. So what I really want to do here is just to uh, go here. Uh, here's my Mori material with all of the inputs that's in this scene here so let's take a look here what we got for this one for example let's take this material here let's create that one first so we want to have um, some of the settings here that we can drive if i hit s here i'm gonna go into the node so i, I double clicked onto the material node to get the properties some real estate for my properties take my material and we want to create some of these sliders here so off the bat it doesn't have any sliders it's just the whatever is driving it from the shader so looking at this here weight i didn't set that one but let's set it as it is here and see what what we get um float so i create the float node I name it to, uh, so I guess if you create the material first time, you wanna create all of the sliders you, you need, then you can save it and reuse it uh, and just tweak the values for basic materials. Uh, or you can create a gizmo as well and just import it and hook it up, it's up to you. We wanna name this to something sensible, diff, and we want to propagate 0 to 1. So this is a value between 0 and 1. Oh, let's do that. So you see here 0 to 1, this range here. If I hit this little, uh, what's it called? Dog bone. <laughs> Promote attribute. It's going to end up into uh, the material slider there. You see this is the top node that we see there. So I hook this up. So uh, we have 0 to 1. We can set this to 0.8 like so and then we want to take these colors here so yeah this is a metal uh, in arnold the metalness it takes the color from the diffuse when it's set to metal it's going to take that so let's take the color set these uh, values i get there we want to take color space accg there float let's take a look here we want to have it between zero and one there so 
maybe one there i guess two one that's fine so yeah it would be nice with uh, a uh, some kind of tool to yeah so if i have a slider here or set up my shader just hit the button and it sinks into mori i hope uh, that's gonna come or someone will probably make a script gens capits maybe extension pack we'll get this over should have the same color in those two hook that up and the metal I guess it's I want to be able to choose this color maybe I want to override it so yeah I propagate that out and this yeah that's not the one we want to have it to the metal there like so there we go and we want to name this diff call so yeah it's it's good to have um, the names correctly because that's gonna be if I go out here and double click on this one it's gonna take the names there so you see here now it has color so yeah that would be nice if it can auto update I guess if I go in here and propagate it out uh, take it away and back again it refresh the name metalness we want to propagate that one out as well the roughness is also something that we want to take from this one so another float the float is an extension pack uh, i like that one because it has nice sliders they can go from zero to one so uh, or there we go spec or so yeah you build uh, one of these materials save it out as uh, your first template and then you start to use that i will take the values i get in my offline render as the ground truth and use those in my material because then I know that when it renders it's gonna match whatever I wanted there. So let's create here. So we want to have a normal color and bump displacement. At this moment let's create first off just create a normal color and hook that up to normal there. We want to have a, um, a bump. So this one we will have a pattern to drive a breakup later on. But first off, I just want to start with a uh, with a color that I can over... No, let's take a float here. I want to have a float slider so we can set this numerically. So let's create this as a bump, as, at least as, as the base. And set this to 0.5 middle value. So all my materials will have 0.5 middle value as a start. So let's take this out. Let's go there. Let's take this one as a just test demonstration that you can use a color if you want to as well. Doesn't matter really. But when you use a color, you see here, I have to set it to scalar here. So you have a uh, the value you set here is 0.5. So for example, if we set this to 50, you see 0.5. Let's try this without setting it to, uh, it's going to be different. When you look at it, at this one, look at this one, you see there's a different there. Because this one uh, is linearized and then you look at it, this one you turn off color management, but uh, in the no graph it doesn't know this. So just make sure to set it to scala there. So let's create this now as a material. Uh, and see what happens let's look outside here see what we get so we have diffuse weight let's look at the material and see how it is respected um, we have diffuse weight we have the color of the diffuse the metalness slider and the bump is set to 0.5 there as default so this is kind of uh, my setup here if i would uh, render it would uh, produce this here and also here if you look at this we can uh, start to maybe uh, if I want this the spec R above the bump and the metalness or the bump I want below the spec R for sure so we can take a look at how we can do that let's say uh, the spec R I want to move up metalness So there we have diff weight, diff call, metalness, spec or and bump. So that, yeah, that's wanna, what I want. 
So let's set that as the first material. So now we want to export this. Double click on it, go to node, export as material. And then you want to export it somewhere on disk. So in my case here, crash plan, oops. Let's take a um, library or let's go to my global materials on node. In this, I want to have a folder called metal. So yeah, um, let's call this metal. I'm not sure what you call it. Is it anodized? And I'm not really sure how you spell it either. So let's try that and create one of those. So there we have our first one. So I haven't add breakup. Uh, I guess there's a super tiny breakup on that one, but it's, I think uh, the roughness alone will uh, make that work. It's not as the actual housing. When I look at it, the housing actually, it's easy to see the, like the micro noise there. I guess it's powder coated or something. So let's create a shelf for this as well. And uh, let's call it just drag uh, my material into that one. Project, crash plan, global materials. Just take this and there we have it. The first materials is saved here now from my Arnold shader. So uh, let's go and create this one now. So we can just jump in here and uh, quickly just... The second material here, I just uh, gonna summarize here what I did. If I double click on it here, go to my material. So I added a, a bump and like a noise into this. So I have a fine noise there I can add. And it's gonna be this, this slider actually. So you see it's, it's very sensitive and also I took the material from this one here if I hit uh, render here. So it's it's this material. So I took the settings from that one. Just transferred over these settings so it's mainly the roughness value and that I changed from the red one. And I added the bump and the bump is just a purling noise here looking at the noise that I leveled just with a with like a brightness lookup. So I get some kind of funky noise there. And I exposed the material, uh, this the bump into uh, like the overlay and the amount here as a slider and this one. So in the material node, it's gonna be underneath all of the materials uh, settings. We have the bump here so we can have that. So now I'm gonna go ahead and create this, the black in the same way that I did here from uh, these settings. So it's gonna be just transferring over these settings and export it out in the same fashion and add it to my shelf here next to these. And then we can start to paint and blend my materials in Himori. Okay, so I just want to show here the last setting I actually added to this, the, the black hair material. As you recall, the this material I actually used without using the metalness because I uh, it's a, like a painted metal. So I, I used uh, in this over refraction instead. So what I did is to reset the, the metalness slider to zero. And then I added this specular IR and in my shader in Arnold in Maya, it was 1.6, you see here. So if I set this, essentially set this to, to a high value, it's gonna kind of behave like a metal as well. In my case, it's what, like 1.6 or something um, like this. And uh, I have the same here, uh, kind of um, the bump here as in the other material just a different, uh, slightly bigger setting there on onto the actual uh, noise pattern. So yeah, uh, export is at here. Let's see here. So we get everything I need. Spec IOR would be interesting to have it above bump there. So let's do that. P, let's go up, up. There you go. So. Roughness, spec IOR, yeah, 
let's do that. Let's save this and go to node here and let's say uh, export to the same place, global configure sharing wall and uh, let's import this and start to blend this. So we want to add now, I think I'm going to take the the housing like the aluminium in the in the bottom as just covering everything so we can here go to my uh, take my materials on standard and take my smoky aluminium in the base and see what happens nothing happens it's because I turned off all the streams if I go here uh, you see here I've turned uh, let's go here you see here I have uh, switched off all my uh, streams here. So diffuse weight here for example. Diffuse color, metalness, roughness, IR we can set as well. We want normal bump and displacement is turned off by default. Okay so here we have something. So we have that as a base and then we want to uh, add this anodized red on, onto the ring here. So let's do that. So we can take here my face selection here. Yes, double click on this. Let's drag my, uh, we want to drag this one into. So there we go. And then actually I want to flood fill uh, kind of everything with the rest and mask it off. Because I want to I wanna group that, uh, the, the top one. We can take a look at that as well. Let's go to layers and um, go to my Arnold and take painted metal black so so yeah I see here now my name I have to rename the nodes better before I export them so at the moment it's it's a little confusing there but I, I push on and remedy that later so here we have this but I want to group this because I want to have the flexibility to actually for example, take away uh, maybe bump in areas or stuff, and that's easier to do if you have a group and you mask the group because then you can go in and add uh, overrides within the group and it's gonna group all of the streams down here. So let's do that. So select this one, go to this and say group. So now it's gonna group all of that, group my material and all of the content within the stream here down here inside and then actually I want to mask uh, this the group instead of uh, masking the material so let's do that so first off we can say uh, lay mask add we can say reveal all like this so let's take this one that one and just drag black into this on the mask there. So it will be interesting just now to export out my channel straight after bat and do a render to see how how close it match or how close it doesn't match or whatever. So let's do that. And to do that, we have this export manager up here. We can just select here's my uh, channels. So we have the all of the channels going out here and. Um, if I export it out and uh, hook it up in the render. So let's do that. You don't want to see me export this, that's just boring. Well, I will take uh, all of these channels here, export it out to this folder. Let's create a new folder actually, because I already exported this in an earlier version. Let's take lens out or something. So we have a fresh set. Fire up and export all here and uh, jump into Maya and hook up the shader with all of these textures now onto the same material before we start to add breakup or mask the material. Okay, so here in uh, Maya now, let's see here. So I hooked up the material and all of the exported nodes so we can see here. And yeah, I think it, it kind of looks as I expected uh, out of the bat here. So now we can actually hear, we know that uh, the material is gonna come over as it was looked at here in, uh, in Maya. So that's good. So now actually, I'm gonna do another material here and start to add, uh, if I look here at my, uh, my lens here, 
I mean, we have text and stuff. But yeah, so, and the, the material here, we see here, it's one material and we have the textures that I for here. We have the base color or that's the base, that's the diffuse. Um, there we have the color, metalness, specular roughness, bump. And um, that's actually the IR is not visible here in the base here. So I have to connect it through uh, the other setting here. You can just pipe it in there and search for it. Okay, so next time we're gonna take a look how we can do some uh, textural breakup and uh, finalize this asset. So stay tuned and if you wanna support my channel, consider subscribing and hit the bell notification so you don't miss anything.